everyone so in this video i'll be talking about the documents that are needed for applications for different programs in canada so i'll first talk about the documents you need to apply for a diploma program i'll talk about postgraduate diploma programs certificate programs bachelor's degree or bsc msc and also phd so it means that irrespective of the program that you want to apply for in canada all of the documents that you need to apply for such programs they are going to be covered in this video so if once you're ready to start you know gathering or applying for anything admission of course one of the first things you need to make sure you have is your international passport if you don't have an international passport don't even bother starting okay you can be doing your research but obviously you're going to need that so let's talk now specifically about the documents needed for the application for diploma programs so these are you know the same okay for irrespective of the colleges that you're applying for okay now diploma programs are mostly offered by colleges okay they are usually two years programs except if it's an advanced diploma i talked about in my previous video that is a three years program so the documents that you need to apply for diploma programs it depends on your level of education so if you are just straight out of high school um, in some african country they say secondary school you know irrespective of the country you are from the uh, you know anywhere in the world there are two, two things you actually need if you're straight out of high school. Number one, you need your high school diploma, sometimes called secondary school certificate, right? You need that. And then most times they require for your secondary school transcript so you can reach out to your school for them to prepare the last three years of your high school, your secondary school to prepare that transcript. You are going to need that. And then like I mentioned, your international passport. And then if you're not from an english speaking country you're going to need to write the english proficiency test most you know the most common one is the ielts exam so you need to do that okay if you already and make sure you check with the college because there's going to be a minimum required to apply so they're, they're going to state it in their website so if you already have a diploma let's say a higher national diploma national diploma whatever kind of degree or a bachelor's degree or even masters you can still apply for a diploma program you can apply for postgraduate diploma postgraduate certificate you know provided you apply for a program that matches with either your work experience or you know mo most likely your recent work experience or your educational qualifications okay i've talked about you know this in my previous video in terms of how to choose a course that matches you know what you're already studying because you really want to be able to convince the visa officer when you apply in your letter of explanation because they've denied a lot of people because there is no progression progression doesn't mean you've done bsc you must now do masters no progression has to do with um the specific course if you are if you've already done a bachelor's and you want to do a, a, a diploma then how is the diploma going to advance your own experience that you've already gotten okay i've talked about that let's you've done electrical engineering in your bachelor's degree but now you want to you want to specialize mainly in let's say um uh, circuit or you know connections any other type of engineering then you can do a diploma program on that and you can you can try to explain to the visa officer that you know what i really want to advance my career and i don't want to do another bachelor's degree but i want to just specialize that's why i'm doing this degree like i mentioned if you already have a bachelor's or diploma or master's what you're going to need is number one you're going to need your diploma which is like your bsc or diploma or msc certificate and transcript you're going to need your cv okay um some colleges may not require but i usually recommend to have it because this can help to explain the study gap okay what you've been doing since you graduated your work experiences you know then it can convince the colleges because some colleges if you have more than five years gap they're not going to give you admission but if you can show that you'll be doing something productive relating to the course you want to apply for those five years you should still be fine and uh, you are still going to need your secondary school certificate okay sometimes some program will require you to have a portfolio okay uh, maybe especially for some some programs like photography okay 
if you have an app if you have had an ad boom you know previously then you can upload that in this case if you already have a bachelor's degree or master's or diploma you don't need a high school transcript just upload your secondary school result your university transcript certificate and you are good now there are some people that may still choose to apply for some of these colleges with their high school certificate you know and leave out any of that post secondary degrees well if it works for you congratulations but i personally suggest that you add your diploma and your po other post-secondary education because this will convince the college that oh I imagine somebody did their high school in 2006 and now or 2008 and now you want to apply for college in 2014 or 2000, sorry 2024 2023 or 2024 that's almost more than you know 14 years or thereabout so you want to convince that okay within those times i did a bachelor's degree i did this diploma and i'll be working you know all of this time so that way it's really understandable that's why your cv becomes important to justify some of those gaps for most of the colleges uh statement of purpose is not required okay recommendation letters are not required and it's important for you to know that most of the colleges they don't offer scholarships so if you're looking for scholarship then uh, you have to be thinking about either a master's or phd okay now moving away from diploma let's talk about bsc or bachelor's degree now the requirements are similar to a diploma program you know especially for those that are straight out of high school okay what you're going to need is your secondary school certificate or your or your um, final results you're going to need your transcript and then your international passport cv not really important okay and uh, basically um what i would advise is if you already have a bachelor's degree i won't personally advise you to do another bachelor's degree in canada because you already have four years of bachelor's degree now you want to apply for another four years how are you going to convince the visa officer that you are going to do a bachelor's degree except you really want to change career and it is you write a two three page letter of explanation to really convince the visa officer why you are doing a bachelor's degree okay it, it is difficult the reason has to be very solid so i mean whatever you want to do in a bachelor's degree you can do a two years diploma and you know be, you you still get almost the same quality of education and in terms of work prospect you should just be fine for most for bsc application most of them statement of purpose is usually not required you know sometimes they might ask you to describe what you'll be doing since you graduated okay uh let's talk about scholarship for bachelor's degree they are hardly full scholarship for bachelor's degrees but if you have a lot of a's and b's in your high school certificate or your final high school result you may be eligible for an entrance excellence scholarship now this is automatic which means you don't apply for this separately okay so when you apply for admission they look at your profile and they can give you five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars in fact i just saw somebody recently that got thirty two thousand canadian dollars for undergrad scholarship because they had a lot of a's and b's in their results now before i go to the next point if you've been enjoying this video so far can i click on the like button it's going to show you too that you are really enjoying this video and i will recommend this video to more people and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed next let's talk about some of the documents that you need for msc or master's application now the complexity is increasing this is more complex than either a bachelor's degree application or or, or, or diploma or postgraduate certificate okay this is this is quite different now these are some of the things that you are going to need now you're going to need your secondary school certificate of course you don't need secondary school transcript okay just need the secondary school certificate then you're going to need your bachelor's um certificate or not all bachelor's certificate and transcripts i know sometimes people will ask or oh, is it official transcript or student transcript it's best to have the official transcript and i know sometimes some schools might tell you they don't want to get transcript by hand you can apply and use you know any address if they were allowed to use a, a company address that you know and they send it to the company you can use it okay but make sure you have you know kind of discuss with uh, them and see if that is possible because if you tell them to send the transcript 
to these universities then you end up if you want to apply for five schools it means you're going to be applying for a transcript five different times these days a lot of universities don't even require you to send uh, an official transcript sometimes it's okay when you've gotten admission we will you can we'll give you about one or two semesters to submit your official transcript okay now you're going to need um two to three letters of recommendation academic letters of recommendation or uh you can also maybe work related letters of recommendation you're going to need a very detailed stand of purpose this has to be well written because it's one of the most important part of the application another thing you're going to need is a letter of support from the prospective supervisor especially for those that are applying for research programs okay now there are some uh research msc that you can apply without having to get a supervisor. They're going to state it on our website that your supervisor, supervisor is not required prior to admission, but you have to identify two to three prospective professors that you love, you love to work with, and this will be written in your SOP. So your SOP will be, I've talked about that in previous video, it has to be detailed, talking about how you, why you want to apply for this course and other things. In terms of English proficiency, uh, if you are not from an English speaking country, yes, you're going to definitely going to need uh, the English proficiency test, this is the IELTS test. If you are from an English speaking country, sometimes they would, you can provide what's called a letter of English proficiency. A lot of, the other, a lot of other times, they, if you are from an English speaking country, they are just going to exempt you. Okay? And another thing that is required for master's admission is test scores. These test scores are usually GROE, Graduate Record of Examination, or Graduate Record Examination, something like that, and GMAT. Okay, GMAT are mostly for those that are applying for um, uh, business and, and some other things. So that's why you have to do your own research, specifically check the department that you're applying and see what is the score that is required for those test scores because there is a minimum so that when you are preparing to do that test you have something in mind in terms of the minimum that is going to give you admission and another thing you also required application fee a lot of you know universities for masters require application fee so if you're able to see a university that is that doesn't offer you know or application fee waiver that is good you know but most of them are saying you know prepare to pay right prepare to pay don't be surprised when they ask you to pay hundred dollars or four hundred and fifty dollars so let's talk about scholarship there are usually no scholarships for course based masters at least an entrance scholarship now for research based masters once you secure a supervisor that actually means that those that particular professor they have funding available and is going to come with your admission letter okay now if you apply for a research program that don't require supervisor before applying you're going to get a scholarship after the admission committee have reviewed your application and they've approved your admission and most times some of these professors that you've selected in your application they're going to review your application and if they like your application they are going to select you you don't even you don't even need to apply for these scholarship separately is automatic okay so that's why you have to do your own research to check what are some of the requirements for these um course based and research based masters now for research programs after you have gotten admission the professor may also nominate you for example when i got my phd admission my professor nominated me for what is called the entrance and recruitment scholarship and I was able to get about additional $20,000 from that. But this is only available to those that have gotten admission. So if you've not gotten admission, you can apply for a lot of this scholarship, okay? Before I talk about the uh, PhD, I'm glad to really announce to you guys that I have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where I really provide the one-on-one -on -one guidance, you know, in terms of how to select school, admission, scholarship, and visa applications. So if you're interested, uh, there's going to be a link um, to my website in the video description and also in the pinned comment link below. So definitely check it out, check on WhatsApp and reach out to me. Lastly, let's talk about phd you know i have quite an experience in all of this because i've done masters here i've done phd i've helped a lot of people that apply for diploma programs so i know all of the documents that they require now for phd the documents that are required are very similar to that of masters okay you will need the following to apply for phd you're going to need your bsc certificate and transcript at the phd level 
most times they i don't think they require your 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 uh, high school certificate now that's already because they believe that for you to have gotten your masters you must have submitted that so they don't really bother about that you, you need your bsc and your msc transcripts and certificates possible uh if possible in fact you should have that not if you should have because you're going to need it it, even though you don't have the uh, you don't have to send the official uh, copy for a lot of univer uh, universities, but make sure you have the official copy so that you can upload it during the application. You're going to need international passport, of course, and in this case uh, CV is important, and you will also need recommendation letters, right? Now, this recommendation letter doesn't mean your your, your prospective uh, referees are going to write it and then you upload the. Um, PDF. Most times these days, when you apply for admission, you just need the email address of the referee. Once you put the email address of the referee, once you submitted the application and have paid the application fee, they automatically go to send a link to the prof professor for them to fill reference. That way, you can. It's your responsibility to be communicating with the professor, with your referees, to make sure that they do a very good recommendation letter because this is a very big part of the admission process. One other thing you're also going to need is a letter of support from your prospective supervisor okay now in some phd uh, program uh you can apply without a supervisor uh, they are they also go to state it on their website but you also identify some of the professors that they want to work with and this will now be written in your sop or similar of purpose very important you this is compulsory some programs will require you to add a phd proposal i would say in this case if you've secured a supervisor discuss with your supervisor to know the project then you can write something based on that project okay maybe one or two pages they're going to specify the requirement in terms of proof of english proficiency if you're not from an english uh, speaking country you're also going to require that test scores gre and D gman this is specific for programs you when you go through it it depends on the program you apply for you also go to see if it is required okay no other program require this application fee it is compulsory uh, except there is a application fee waiver for scholarship uh, usually 90 percent of 90 percent of phds are fully funded okay uh, the other ones that are not funded you just have to find a way to pay your tuition okay once you secure a supervisor for a phd that means automatic funding actually because um it is rare for you to get a supervisor and not get funding that's why when you are having conversation with your supervisor your prospective supervisor don't be shy to ask about what are some of the funding opportunities available okay and if you are applying for a program that PhD program that does not require to get a supervisor then when you get the admission the scholarship is also going to come with the admission okay and most time like I said, the professors you selected, they will review your, your application and if they like your application, they are now going to select you and then your admission comes out. When you come in, you can now work with them. After you have gotten admission, your professor may not uh, uh, you know, nominate you for some PhD excellence award or some you know, uh, scholarship or recruitment award. This is really you know, um, all of the things that you're going to be needing for application either for bsc for masters or diploma postgraduate certificate programs and all of that now that is going to be it for this video so if you really enjoyed this video i'll, I'll enjoy you to please hit that like button okay it's really going to help the youtube i've already recommend this video to other people and if you haven't subscribed do it to hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video thank you